it's a tiny little thing that can fit in some really tight spaces. That didn't come out right. I've seen a lot of videos in the last year or so about custom 10 inch network racks like that one. I always thought it was a cool concept, but didn't really see a lot of devices that could be used in such a small little footprint. I've got another video on my channel here about the data center in my basement that I'm using as a home lab, really, or was using. See, I got rid of it not too long ago because it wasn't being used, and I wanted to get it in the hands of somebody that was gonna fully utilize it more than I was. Don't get me wrong, I'm still running a pretty decent little server here at home. Could be better, but hey, it's a lot cheaper on power than it was. Anyway, I reached out to DeskPy, the sponsor of today's video, to see if they'd be interested in working together on a build like this. And when I say sponsor today's video, let me be a little more clear there. They sent me two items. So out of everything in this rack, only two items were sent to me. One was the Rackmate T1, which is the chassis here. The other was the Super 6C. Now I'm not gonna go into that in this video, but essentially it's a mini ITX board that takes CM4 or CM5 modules, the little Raspberry Pi compute modules, run them in clusters and maintain Docker images on them and things like that. That's in here, but I'm not gonna talk about that today. Today, I wanna talk about the build that I'm kinda done with, but not really. Let's dive into it. So my original intention with this thing was to make a portable network rack, something I could take with me to events or as I'm traveling for work that I could use in the hotel room or at the event to offer Wi-Fi to my coworkers and hardwired network to my coworkers that had dedicated VPN access back to our main stack. Something that's a little more secure than hotel Wi-Fi. But the more I dive into this, I think my plans have changed. So this is gonna be more valuable to me as a network sandbox. And what I mean by that is I wanna be able to learn things like DNS and containers and more about virtualization and managing virtualization, storage optimization without impacting my primary home network. Because Lord knows what happens if Minecraft is down. Anyway, they sent me this and said, let's do a video on it. So here we are doing a video on it. Of course, as always, links are down in the description for anything I talk about here today. Put a new lens on the camera. Let's try this out. So we've got our rack here. So when this arrived, it came with just the case, uh, a couple of these blank panels that just really have nothing on them, just blanks, a shelf for the two Raspberry Pis, and the one that they sent me also had these adapter cards or daughter cards that move the power delivery and HDMI outputs to the front of the case. One's a Raspberry Pi 4, one's a 5. Anyway, and it came with a shelf that was just a all in, you know, whole size flat shelf, just plain old shelf. Starting at the bottom here, we've got a blank and you'll see what's behind that blank here in a minute when I turn this around. Next up, I wanted to put a gateway in here like Ingenious has the fit line of networking hardware and they sent me these for review a while back. I think that video is up on the channel already. You can check that out. They're a pretty small footprint, so I went ahead and used them. Why not? So I wouldn't have to purchase something new like Ubiquities or dedicated hardware for this because I've already got it. My intention was to manage everything in one dashboard as much as possible. Stepping up from there, there's a patch panel, 12 port patch panel. And this is pretty sweet because these are just keystone connectors here. So moving up from here is where I put the shelf, where I put a shelf and an eight port PoE switch. It's actually a 10 port switch, two are SFPs. That's a whole other fiasco. Above that, I've got a KVM switch. Above that is the shelf that came with the rack for two Raspberry Pis. I have a Raspberry Pi 5 and a Raspberry Pi 4. Here's where things start to get a little wonky. My Raspberry Pi 5, great. It works fine. I bought it brand new. I got a uh, M.2 hat for it so I can install an M.2 um, drive. Why is it not on right now? Well, I'm learning to install Windows on a Raspberry Pi because now that Windows can work on ARM or they have a version of Windows for ARM processors, uh, it could be great to have a Windows PC essentially in here that I can access for management really in daily use. My other Raspberry Pi here, my intention was to put Ubuntu on it, Ubuntu 24 or even 22 if it came down to it. So learning to install Windows on Raspberry Pi seems to be a pretty straightforward process, but at the same time, not so much. So that's why that's off right now. Again, good example of what I could use this for in a sandbox. 
The other Raspberry Pi is the Raspberry Pi 4, and that came out of the Evergreen Chia Miner that, again, another video on my channel, went up in smoke and tried to burn my house down while I was in the shower one morning. Good times. Doesn't seem like it works at all. Plug the power into it, it actually powers down the other USBs that I have on the same power strip or PDU. So that's gonna have to get ripped out and put elsewhere. Moving on, I've got an Optiplex 3070 here. This has an i5 9th gen processor, uh, 32 gigs of RAM, 256 gig NVMe or something like that. And then a one terabyte SATA SSD as well. This is my Proxmox host. And then finally at the top here inside the rack is that Super 6 C board. Currently, I have it populated with four CM4 compute modules. That's what the CM stands for. But again, I haven't done anything with it yet. And then on top, I've got a 10 inch monitor uh, that I've had laying around here that I ended up not using for another project and thought, hey, this is perfect. Just fits on the top, too. Let's flip this over and look at the backside. So she said, please don't fall. All right. Cable management wasn't too bad in this because of these glass sides. They've got half inch to three quarters of an inch between the glass and the inside of where the shelves and everything attach to, to the rack. So a lot of the cables and stuff are rolled up and tucked into the sides here. Not too bad. So at the bottom down here is where I've got the power bricks. This bad boy right here in the middle is actually a NAS that I'm building. Haven't completed it yet. Hey, do you notice a theme here? I got a lot going on already. Bear with me. This is the Zima blade that that I've got on a little chassis that has two 10 terabyte, three and a half inch spinning disc drives in it. I'll be using TrueNAS on here, but that's gonna be the storage for this sandbox, really. So finally, I've got a power strip over here, just a plain old power strip with a couple of USB ports as well, so that I can do things like powering the monitor over USB and the Raspberry Pis over USB as well. The piece de resistance, that was horrible, I apologize for that. Wi-Fi 6 access point by Ingenious as well, so it's, again, all gonna be in the same ecosystem, all all the networking can be managed from a single dashboard. So this is gonna be installed here, but on a extend -a pole Obviously it can be extended, but I want to mount it right here, have the access point essentially on the top here, and then I can extend it up to, I think it said six feet. No, what is that? That's three feet so that the access point gives a little bit better radius than it just sitting next to it or on top of it. This is gonna be a learning opportunity for me to enhance my IT skills and potentially my career. There's a lot of things that I want to do with this and it just takes time, right? So the idea here is to keep it separate from my home primary network. So whatever I fuck up over here isn't gonna impact everything else over here. But what do I wanna do with this? Well, first off, I want to install Pi-hole. That is for local DNS and ad blocking. I can go to proxmox.geek.local or something instead of 192.168, blah, blah, blah. There's a service called Zero Tier, which looks like, like a VPN, but creates its own virtual layer two. S3 object storage, I'd like to see how I can start playing with it more and learning more about how it's used, when to use it. Fail to ban is a local access brute force defense application. That's interesting. Home Assistant, of course. Home Automation is the bee's knees. We're gonna have to really get into that deeper. Veeam, I've used Veeam for years. I have Veeam on on my workstations. I'm using Veeam on a virtual machine to back up the VM to a local target. Veeam, even the free community edition, now supports dedicated Proxmox backups. Super interested in learning more about that. Portainer for Docker container orchestration. Nessus Essentials is an enterprise level network vulnerability scanner. So I'd like to learn a little bit more about gaps that could be affecting my or other people's networks. Suricata is a network um, IPS and IDS platform as well. And uh, and then of course Grafana to monitor and graph all the things. And all of these are pretty much either free tier or freemium or open source options out there for home labs like us that just want to run services at home. Back to the rack itself, what I really like about it is it's totally customizable. Lots of options and ways that you can configure this to fit your system. It's a tiny little thing that can fit in some really tight spaces. 
That didn't come out right. There's a lot of bolt-on options. I bought more than I needed, <laughs> put it that way. If you have a 3D printer, they have a lot of 3D printed options out there too. If you have a 3D printer that's big enough, my 3D printer is not big enough to print these. So I can't really do that at the moment. Well, I got a CR10, but I don't have it hooked up and running. Moving on, handles, it has freaking handles. I love the handles on this thing because I can move it around and take it with me easier. And the tinted glass sides are a nice touch. Like I said, it helps to hold that cable mess pretty well. I do have some RGB I was thinking about putting in here as well when I finalize things and put it all together because this is gonna be an ever changing situation. I don't think it's gonna remain static like this. Hell, for example, like I said, this Raspberry Pi is broken. So I gotta take it out and figure out something else. I got two more over there. Don't know if I'm going to use them. This Raspberry Pi I'm having a real fun time installing Windows on, but maybe I don't want Windows on that. Maybe instead I'll put another micro desktop. I've got two more of them back there running Hyper-V. Or maybe I buy a whole bunch of more Raspberry Pis and cluster them together. I don't know. Realistically, there's a few things I don't like. Cable management is a bitch. And anything that's gonna be small like this, you're, you're gonna run into limitations like that. And that's fine. Uh, for example, that this whole one and a half U at the bottom is taken because of these power bricks. It is a little bit pricey. Not gonna lie, you get a lot with it out of the box and it is a very cool custom setup. That being said, it's almost always on sale from what I've seen so far. This isn't really a negative about the rack itself, but plan ahead. It is a bitch and a half to get in here and make any kind of changes to the setup after it's already up and running. So what am I not thinking of here? I rambled off a whole bunch of these different services that I want to run in my home lab sandbox and kind of learn them before I eventually move them into my primary network. What kind of services are you running that I didn't think of? Sounds like I might have a plan for some new videos in 2025. So I'm excited to tear this all apart again and get into it again and set this up the right way like I had mentioned the first time again. <laughs>